Hello there, thanks for stopping by. This is Daz B, otherwise known as FM Heathen, and I'm coming back to YouTube. I do actually have a YouTube channel, as you can see. A few years ago, I did some videos of the Heathens uh, with FM, recreating Newton Heath, as you can probably see in the playlists and my profile. But I've not done it for a long while, but I just thought I wanted to share this World War II uh, database that I've been creating. We started with this screen here, which is all the major divisions all put together. And I want to give you um, a quick overview of, of really why I've done it and and really what I get from playing something like this which is basically a historical recreation of the league structure and I've got to say that now it's not the player structure if we choose a, a random team such as Chester here uh, you can see that FM thank you very much FM still keeps the captains in for some reason even though you delete them all it keeps the regular ones in um, but everyone else is fake players but if we just look at the players um, here you can see we've got hardly any players I'll explain that in a minute you will notice they're mostly home nation that's another thing as well um, but um, it's a database a league recreation and a competition recreation of the state of play of 1942 when they were three years into the war and they finally settled onto a coherent structure of the leagues and the reason I play these is so that I can research them as well I'll keep flipping through the tree the scheme the teams as I'm talking you won't recognize any of the names I have used the um, the fake player names uh, to keep it more sort of more you know less jarring if you see a famous player um, and you can see a lot of the teams are completely empty I'll explain that in a minute some have got some whites but a lot have got greys and there's the odd glitch we're on version 3 like Wrexham I do believe haven't got a name in there I have no idea why but that needs rectifying but this, we're not, you know, we're nearly, we're 99% there. Most of it's okay, apart from things like the captains and, and the odd name. Um, so, so yeah, let's go back to the uh, leagues in focus. And I'll just start to talk about, well, first of all, um, as I'm just browsing the teams, um, I'll just, um, I'll just show you. I'll go, let's go to the club, um, the profile. Yeah, that's it. Already on the profile. Sorry. Um, I'll just I'll just flick through the teams, please. Like I say, ignore these. What will happen with these? And I cannot understand why they're stuck in the game. They are literally not in it. All the shot I can tell you now is empty of captains. It's just a glitch in the game, um, because of course FM doesn't want you to to sort of. Well, it's not designed to create things like this. That's why uh, they will go as soon as whoever it is, the AI manager, replaces the captain, so in a week they'll be gone. Um, but basically, if we just go through like this, if you just have a look, um, we've got um, Arsenal, we've got Brentford, etc. And each one of them has, that's a good one, isn't it? Each one of them has got these old pictures that I've put in. Um, so, so yeah, it's a, it's a league recreation to show you the problems they have at the time. One of the main problems, and this has been the hardest thing to do, is to have no players um, or hardly any players um, which which was a, a massive problem so I'm just gonna give you as I keep just flicking through these and let you see some of these teams um, I'm just gonna give you a sort of sense of uh, of the way the league looked in 1942 so the government first of all wanted to to, to boost morale by having people uh, play games uh, watch games sorry and they wanted to watch a game every single weekend if they could that was their aim so you're talking about 40 games a year they wanted, they wanted teams to play now the trouble was with that was even if you could get the league going um, the uh, because of the restrictions in traveling and because of the fact that some as you can see teams didn't have any players and also teams like Preston North End with Deepdale whose ground was being used I think it was as a uh, as a service, as something like civil defence or something like that, you you can't um, you you just you just couldn't predict the number of games people would play. So basically, what they did was create loads and loads of competitions, and it was done on a regional basis. So I'm just going to go to the competitions now. This is the South Championship here, as you can see, it was done on a regional basis. And basically, what they did, and these are the ones I've recreated. They gave them leeway. They said we're all going to be friendly competitions, so we can have free movement of players. However, it did mean that none of the records counted. So no matter how many goals you scored in World War Two, it didn't count till the end of the war, and yet professional record resumed, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But it made it more informal. So basically, what happened was 
interpreting those rules was left up to the federation so the north came up with five different groups and each one of those applied to the rule of teams that wouldn't have to travel more than 50 miles now these are the exact ones i've actually got it i'd say about 95 percent correct um there's one or two where i've had to move teams around um purely because of editing problems and database problems uh with the limits of fm the fm editor but basically they, they created these groups so i'm just going to flick through the groups so the north first championship we'll go on and we'll talk about that in a second the north first championship had you see it's got different teams that's got eight the other one had ten and these are the exact same teams you can see they're all yorkshire based and so on because of this 50 mile traveling limit um now they had some other things going on as well because they said um there isn't a chance you know there's, there's a good chance some of you won't complete your games so that that did actually happen so in say for instance you had to play uh, 18 games what you ended up with was some teams only playing 16 so what they came up with was instead of average points and average uh, goal difference which also encouraged um high scoring as well okay so it also encouraged high scoring as well so you do get um, a very strange thing <coughs> excuse me just having water there a very strange thing where you had say for instance villa and birmingham uh well this of course is the midlands one villa and birmingham were uh were tied on um on points it wouldn't go off that it didn't matter so sorry if get this the way around if villa for example had 23 points and birmingham had uh, Birmingham City had like 24 points they, they could they would could still be in this order here because it's all on goal difference and when the tables played out and I'm going to holiday in a short while you can actually see that that's what happens which looks a bit strange at first but it does work there's other rules as well of course there's no subs which is quite interesting now the South Championship they interpreted a different way because they were mostly London clubs and the surrounds they basically again they're exactly the same clubs these are all completely right as, as 1942 they basically um, just made it one league so it's just 34 games it's just 17 teams to play so it's 34 games in there so it's just as normal that one um, and then you've also got uh, the West Championship which was just six teams and they really struggle to get games and when you look at their records they're playing games all over the place against randoms complete randoms um, and that's what we're going to talk about in a sec because basically like I said they wanted to they wanted them to play every week so they had all of these competitions so let's go to these competitions that I've put in now I'll tell you which ones are real and which ones aren't now first of all first championship and second let me explain that so basically they had a first and second championships for the north and the west because they wanted uh, well I think it was the west to give them more games but basically they wanted to um, see how it went up to Christmas before they played another championship so you have a it's like aperture and closure in, in south america you have a, you have one in uh, in the autumn and you have one in the spring as well and it literally one ended on boxing day and the other one started on the first of january so you had and they both of them had trophies and champions um now you had an overall league cup now the league cups were done differently as well there was a bit of a breakaway in 1941 when the 1940 sorry when the uh, the London clubs formed the London Cup, which didn't go down well, and they sort of broke away from the federation. So you never, you know, if if things had happened differently, you know, they could have ended up like, still broke away, which would be a bit weird. But basically, uh, they came back into the fold, and they uh, and they became. We'll talk about this one in a bit as well. The National Service League, they became um, the this the South Association uh, they got the they got the League Cup they got their own Southern League Cup and then eventually what you got and I'll show you the cups that here, here now as we have a look eventually what you had was um, the both League Cups there the Football League West Cup and the football the footballing League North sorry and also the South one as well and then there's a War League Winners Cup but the War League Winners Cup was only from the North and the South it's all a bit complicated um, but yeah, so so basically, they wanted loads and loads of games, so they came up with all sorts. Now the North really had the way with this. By 1943, they had about nine different competitions. So the Lancashire one, Sheffield, Midland, Tyneware and Tees, um, the Cheshire Bowl, which is just four teams, Combined Counties, uh, which is Combined Counties is a weird one. Check this one out. So the Combined Counties, oh, it's not. Has it got the teams there? Let me show you the teams. It's a bit weird. These are the exact teams because they're all from. Yorkshire so I have no idea why it's you would expect it to be um, Lancashire as well now there were some weird anomalies it wasn't even as simple as that it's so bloody complicated um, and that's in for example which one's Barnsley in 
So we're in one of these here. Now, Barnsley straddles almost like two postcodes, really. Um, and I've actually worked in Barnsley. And where they're positioned, uh, certainly at the time, it was hard for them to get games between sort of like, you know, the Lancashire and Yorkshire sort of border, if you like. And they were, um, so to get their 50 miles, this 50 mile limit, to get the games, they had to actually join two groups. It's impossible to do in FM. But ba basically, <coughs> excuse me, they joined them. Should I have a quick drink of water again? You can tell it's a long time since I've done this. So they were both uh, in two groups, and weirdly, they wouldn't play every team in the group. They played like five in this one, six in the other. But it was quite good the way it worked. They actually worked out with exactly the same amount of games at the end. That wasn't all, though. All these groups were then pulled together. Now, you can do this in the advanced editor, but I can't be bothered going through all that. It's too difficult to learn. But basically, they were compi compiled with the West Championship into one final table at the end. And th the weirdness didn't even end there. Remember I mentioned that League Cup? So the North League Cup was only after they'd played... <laughs> two games of the second championship, uh, ten games sorry, of the second championship and uh, even then it was uh, it was only down to 32 teams out of the 48 which were combined of the north and west into one giant table so it's proper weird, when I was first trying to learn it I couldn't really understand why the west finished up in the final table with the north for example but there's so many idiosyncratic things it's really weird now what you also had as well is you had random friendlies that which weren't always documented and it's very difficult to find out the actual records for a full team throughout the year so Charlton Athletic for example might have played lots of friendlies against local teams amateur teams that weren't necessarily included in any competitions and we'll talk about the way they interpreted competition points in a minute as well but first of all uh, I've created these the clubs and services shield because they were friendlies that went on against military training teams and for example um, Stanley Matthews played for the RAF there's a cracking picture of him playing for the RAF so I've come up with these clubs and services shields and you can see we've got service teams in here and it's just to simulate it's a friendly cup just to simulate this this idea that they were playing these games that you wouldn't necessarily get documented um, and this one's for the West just to give them more games as well now let's get on to the these regiments now here's a problem right in the and I created this league this mad league now they they had national service of course national service took players away massively it was just crazy if we go to to Bolton for example um, and I'll just show you that Bolton Wanderers, of course, haven't got any players because what really happened in 1940, in 1939, sorry, on the 28th of April, Harry Goslin spoke in front of the crowd even before the war had even begun, um, six months before, just to say that him and the players were all going to sign up because they knew it was coming, they knew war was coming. And they just walked out. 32 players out of 35 players and staff signed up and they joined the 53rd Regiment, the 53rd brackets Bolton Regiment and they fought in the war and sadly Harry Gosling died in 1943 which is really sad proper hero and he led to loads of recruitment in the town it was just an incredible person but he left the squad with with nobody there so you had people like and I'm not saying this wouldn't have happened anyway but you had Nat Loft Lofthouse coming in in 1939 who played I think it was 15 or 16 years old he played a debut but then of course the war intervened he became a Bevan boy working down the mine and um and when he came back 1945 46 he became of course the player we know him as now so um so yeah it brought in opportunities for younger players now by the way this is only i don't play with this the campa i've just put this in for my own sorting for my own editing because it gives me an idea of the distribution of players because i didn't want massive CAMPA players are deliberately made it low to make it difficult it's got to be difficult it's got to feel like a lower league with all the players stripped now you might be thinking how the hell do I get players well the players are in there they are actually in the database they just a lot of them are floating around on freeze um, and then you've also got a load in those military teams now let's get back to the military teams again so we'll go so we call it the National Service League so let's go back there 
I hope uh, people are, are still interested in this. Uh, so we've got the 53rd Regiment at the top. Now you might be thinking why create a league because the actual Army Football Association was suspended for the war. They never played during the war. Um, but they have got a proper association with regimental teams like this but they just don't play, didn't play in the war. But I've put them in here as a, as a national service simulation. So basically what happens is players can be traded to these, they can go back and forwards. To give you that idea that players are being lost and I filled a lot of them with players already. So these, believe it or not, although the, the game has renamed them, are actually all the Bolton players that I put in. I've put them all into the 53rd Bolton Regiment. Um, and now they've also got, if you have a look at this, you see the depth we've gone to with this, they've also got a partnership with Bolton as well. And Bolton has also got a partnership um, with um, with other clubs, with another one. Um, I think it's Lancashire like like Fusiliers, yeah. Now, for those people who don't know, uh, I'm obviously a Northern lad, and I'm not far, I don't live that far from Bury. They were based in Bury, the Lancashire Fusiliers, and a lot of Bolton people joined up in the Lancashire Fusiliers in both wars. Incredible regiment, really, really famous. So, um, so yeah, so this is a loan partnership between these. So what you will get happening in the game is you will get these regiments loaning players to you. Now you might think, well, would that happen? Well, yes, it actually did, because players would come home and leave and literally play for their team if they were a first team player. It happened quite a lot. Um, you had other things happening as well. You had um, players going to uh, Harry Gosling, for example, before, of course, he died, sadly died. But he played for Chelsea and another Southern team, I can't remember it was, someone like Portsmouth, on guest appearances. Um, so the whole thing was really, really fluid, and basically it was all designed, like I say, to get you uh, different games. I'll just flick through these, and you can see they've all got different ones. Barry's got Lancashire Fusiliers, obviously. These are obviously the Lancashire ones, so there's quite a few East Lancs. There's different combinations. Um, and then if we go to, uh, let's go to the Southern Championship. I think the Southern Championship tend to have, um, here we go. Uh, more southern ones and it's quite hard really because there are not a lot of London regiments so basically yeah I've gone for the main regiments like Royal Air Force and Tank Regiment, Essex of course, Coldstream Guards based in London, Royal Navy Portsmouth so yeah so that's it so that should that does cause in my tests some loans to come through which is pretty cool so you will get to see some loans um, right so let's get back to the National Service League then I'll just explain what's happening here so this is for anybody who's ever done any editing you'll know that the best thing to ever do in the editor is just avoid the advanced, it's just a nightmare and that's the only place where you can put national service in now it comes with its own problems because what happens in the editor it's, I don't know why, but the random algorithm they use to keep the game interesting meant that in my tests, even though I had down to 15th there are all these teams as national, you have to basically create a team that's a national service simulation in the game, that's how it handles it and it hides team away, whichever you choose in a, in a random league somewhere and I don't even think you can you definitely can't manage them I don't think it, you even see the results of the league the positions it's just a holding place it's like a bookmark and basically your players go on loan there for up to 22 months but it's so random so in the first year you'd have things like you'd have um, 100 players being loaned then you'd have none in the following year then you'd have 240 the following year and then on some tests you'd have none at all for four years so it's just so unpredictable it was unworkable so I've simulated it myself by creating this I've made it unplayable here but of course you can add playable leagues if you fancy it as a little challenge but it depends how authentic you want it to be um, but you will get and I've also upped their rep as well they've got better rep than any of the the uh, the regular teams to give them more of a, an edge in the market so I think their reps up to like 7,000 so if you're playing as a lower team um, you know, someone like Lovell's Athletic or something, some, something like that. You will not get, um, you win that. You won't win in a transfer battle versus these. So it'll just force that one immersion breaker for me, is that transfers occur between them, which you know naturally with the AI. And although it means they're leaving for like military service, if you like, when you see them going for five hundred thousand quid, it spoils it a little bit. But like I say, it's just what it is. I've, you know, I've tried to do my best to make it as authentic as I can um, so basically what, what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a little bit of a pause and I'm going to come back in a sec I'm going to holiday forward to the January transfer window and we're just going to see how those teams have padded out and let's have a look at what's happening with the competitions I might go a bit further actually I might go uh, I might even go all the way to May and see how the competitions turned out so I shall see you in a short 
second. Okay, so here we are in that one second, but 20 minutes for me. Um, on to the 31st of May, a holiday straightforward. I'm still unemployed, as you can see, I've just gone for it. Um, and basically, you can see our leagues in focus. We've got the playoffs now as well. So each group has a playoff again to give them more games. Uh, and um, if maybe actually, if we look at the league tables, we might be able to see uh, any examples of those points being switched around that I mentioned. Let me just have a look. We might not be able to do it actually. Um, oh, it's the South's probably the best one. Let's have a look at the South one. I should have prepared for this, shouldn't I? Um, so let's go to the South one. Let's see if we get any point reversals. Ah, there we go. So there's one. So Southampton and Arsenal, even though Southampton have got 32 points and Arsenal's got 38, Southampton finish above them by virtue of goal difference. They've got seven goals better, so far better than four. So, so yeah, so that's how that system works, which, again, is completely real. Um, and then we've got... Um, so let's... What else was going to do? Oh, yeah, let's look at Bolton and let's just see... Um, how their squad has improved now in all the tests they don't improve it very well the AI um, so let's see if they've done the same thing again let's go for senior squad first yeah so they registered 16 players they must have just been playing with greys so I'm guessing they didn't do well they did third in the championship group it's not too bad um, so they've picked up quite a good one there actually Adam Reeve they picked up a couple uh, of decent players from that free sort of stock let's go through the others as well uh, Burnley's just got enough Ah, gosh, Berry's got loads of greys, haven't they? They've still got them. Um, Oldham. Um, yeah, so quite a few have filled up. Rochdale, goodness me, I haven't filled up any. So, and this is what you get with it. This is what I really like. You, this is exactly what it was like. I, I cannot tell you how long it's took me to get this effect. It was so complicated. It was a case of putting all the players in, about 15 per team, putting a load on freeze, sending a load to the National Service League, and just leaving a sparse team in each one so it, I'm, I'm so chuffed that's happened so this will make it and already in my my play tests a really difficult save my aim is going to be to win every single competition which will be pretty cool uh, I think there's something like 10 competitions just move around and win every single one I'd love to do that um, so there you go so that's that so let's just have a look at how the others have finished um, so so the North Championship we can have a look uh, ah let's go for the cups so they're just leagues aren't they and with playoffs so you know how they work uh, but let's just go to to cups so what about maybe um the football league north war cup so there we go so there's the final first round and we can do the stages and go into the tree count me as well and you can see how it works here we go ah there we go so the good thing about when you put it in the editor it works out the buys and everything as well so that's pretty cool so you can see Liverpool won that one. Um, not necessarily this, though. You know, you don't always have the so-called top teams winning now, nowadays because they have altered all the, the reps and the finances and so on. And I forgot to mention that, actually. I have altered the finances. Everything's dropped down, and they're all semi-pro. But Liverpool has turned to pro. That's what does happen. Uh, they tend to do that. Um, here's another thing as well. Oh, you can see now the captains have changed because they've now... Um, they've now the game's played through and it's got rid of those real world ones um this is annoying so basically unless you take your kit packs out what's going to happen is you are going to get the licensed kits so basically what you have to do is and i'll do this when i play it properly is you do that get rid of allow licensed kits I, I do advise keeping the editor running in this as long as you don't use it for cheating of course um because it just spoils the game but basically um you can just uh you can have the kits which looks looks pretty cool um so yeah, so so that's basically it. Is there anything else I'm trying to trying to think? It's hard without knowing exactly what people might what, might want to see. Um, I think I've covered pretty much any everything. Oh, the nationalities, right? See how the Cheshire Bowl finished. Should we have a look at that semi final? I just love creating these worlds and it's just all working on its on its own. It's just brilliant. So uh, Stockport won that one, of course. But let's have a look at Stockport now on the, their player base. Now this is really difficult to do. Um, new gens tend to come back you do get a mix of different countries but the rule is if we go in the league rules that you can only um, you, it, it can't have any foreign players it mustn't have any foreign players at all um, but they still come through on the new gens which is a bit annoying 
um so there you go so um i think that's it really it was quite a quite a long video that just talking it through but i hope you find it interesting it is a good challenge there are some good challenges you can do i will make a list of suggested challenges teams to play with teams that i know for example haven't got any players um or teams who uh lovell's for example lovell's athletic were a real success story of the world they came forward and they were they were a, a team that sort of rose from nothing really to be really successful in the west championship so maybe that's something you can do maybe you could do what i'm going to do which is just play every single uh every single sort of league and try and win it so basically uh, just to summarize there's the game the world war ii database if you fancy having a play around with it you can do and see how you do oh sorry one last thing let's have a look at the transfer should we see how they've worked out what we're looking at specifically isn't it is how it's worked out with um the league teams there you go look at that with the sort of uh, national service team so you can see we've got the parachute regiment is soaking up players let's have a look here so well i thought they were they've not they're just sending some out as well are they Johnny in Warwickshire Regiment, that's an internal one, which is a bit of a bummer. But um, but as you can see there, um, there are lots of service teams. Uh, quite a few service teams there, Seaforth Islanders taking players. And the loan window is longer as well, so none in September, October, let's have a look. November, December, January, there we go again. Yeah, Manchester Regiment's taking some. That's annoying when you get them going between each team. I suppose they could be transferred. Uh, but yeah, so so there you go. So that's the World War II database. Um, if you fancy having a play with it, let me know. It's on Twitter, the link there. Um, all it is is a save file. You just open it, it'll take you to your manager screen, and you can play on from there. And uh, let me know how you go on. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye.